Hi guys, it's Shanae and welcome back to my channel and today I'm reacting to episode 11 of the Daimo Okairi. We are on the penultimate episode, I can't believe it. So I hope you guys will enjoy it, I'm really excited to see where this episode goes. Before we do get into it however, I just want to say a quick and thank you to my amazing patrons and channel members. If you're interested in joining either of those for uncut and exclusive reactions, links will all be in the description below along with my social media and my peer box. And if you want to subscribe, that's always greatly appreciated. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. わかってて言ってんのかな。うん。じゃ、松さんはそっち。あれ。Are えっと。広いっつっても こんな<笑> そう。こいつはそういうの得意じゃないから。俺はたとえ仲良くなってからでもこうやって距離詰められて。そう、like ごめんなさい。ごめんなさい。松さん。俺のバカ。俺のバカ。おお。I <笑> ヒロさんが調子乗ったのが悪いから。俺のせいか。ストレングスハスベンドのボス。もっとちゃんとお泊まりしたかったよ。あのね、朝はね、リンゴサラダ。おお。そうか。そうだったね。大好きな人に。お
名前だよ社名じゃないそういや藤吉さんとこも同業だっつってたけどさすがに関係ねえわなあっまあ別にしろそろそろ発情期かいい年だしいい加減解放されたいねまた連絡 Wait, so did he not does he not know that Mazaki's husband is an alpha? Huh, okay. するので選択権あるんすかそれところで今からみんなで昼飯でもどうだもちろん光たちも一緒に<笑>今日はダメですよ<笑>来客があるので来客最近そういえばみっちゃくんのご家族はオメガなんだってまた小言ですか面倒<笑><笑>今さらまさか怖がられんよう気をつけろよそれこそまさかあなたじゃあるまいし The way he laughed as if he was like, Are you sure you're a moon? You're a moon. 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 こんな風に同じ視点で話せる人に会えると思ってなかったから。いや、I'm <笑> Um, someone being a certain designation, like being an Omega, being an Alpha, being a Beta, isn't a obvious thing necessarily. <laughs> the way they spoke, it's, it's so kind of ambiguous, I think, that Hiromu is an Alpha. So I'm kind of terrified about the revelation. Oh. No, I think it says heat, didn't you mention? Yeah, it's gonna be a mess. I'm scared. I'm scared. Do you have trauma regarding Alpha, or is it more just crap? My heat is near Alpha close by problem. I'm choosing not even to think about. Oh no. Papa, Michi, no auto. こっちに来なさい。早く。うん。いいか、光。うん。みっちゃ、またね。また。なわけねえって気に止めなかった。まさか。まさきさんの旦那がアルファだったとはな。you literally just said you don't have issues with it does seem like he's scared of alphas or maybe it's just a like problem of the heat is he being defensive because that's like saying, oh, because you're a woman, you can't be near a guy if you're not married. Like, mm. just ick. like, I get that there's the pheromones and the heat and everything, uh, but it's still ick. And maybe it's a bit harder, assumedly, to exert said self-control. And the equality is still an issue, so there's that as well. But... Oh, like the way he's just immediately rejecting him and he just said as well, oh, it's not that I 
mind other families and what they do but like it's giving oh it's not that i mind homosexuality but <laughs> Yeah, it's super insulting for you to say it like that. You're kind of disgusting right now. Like, I get he's scared and I'm trying to remember that if you're scared, you're gonna say things that you might not necessarily mean under normal circumstances, but I just, how are you standing there berating someone for their life choices? Who gave you the right? And the thing is, I like, I get him being protective of Michan, that is one thing. But it almost feels like it's beyond that. It feels like he's literally over here judging Mazaki for the husband that he has and the children that he has. <laughs> Way too far. You can't say that directly after what you just said. You just did! That is not the easiest path. You're teaching him to fear life just like... Mazaki's parents taught him to feel alive. Like, apply this to anything else. Apply this to racism. Apply this to sexism. Apply this to sexualities. And this argument falls apart really quickly. Like, oh, I wanna give my kid the easiest life so i'm gonna keep him away from all races all sexualities all sexism and not teach him how to handle it or stand up for himself that's just unrealistic somewhere somehow he's gonna encounter that and because you've kept him in a bubble for the entirety of his life up until whatever point he does encounter it he's not gonna know how to handle it Masaki. Okay, so I'm glad they showed this because it shows that. No, I get it, unfortunately. Shows that, unfortunately, Mi Chan's. Sorry, I can't remember his name. Wasn't wrong, and that the effect is serious. But unfortunately, I still feel that keeping him in a bubble is not the solution. And it's completely unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. What's sad to me here is in the situation neither of them got hurt. So both of them were equally affected by the situation. And yet the way that he spoke the way that Mi Chan's father spoke made the alphas, the, the aggressors, the enemy, the predators, you know. And again, maybe this is my lack of knowledge with these types of tropes, but because of the way that this, this trope has been framed within this specific story, I don't think there is supposed to be like a this one, the sex is actually worse than the other, it's more the society views it that way. And because of the society viewing Al Omegas as the way that they are, they're also not really seeming to consider the fact that Hiramu didn't choose to like basically be hit by an aphrodisiac when he has a husband that he loves. Like, that's like blaming someone for being drugged. Basically, my thing is just, 
if pheromones are as strong as they're clearly implying here. This is a, a drug that works both ways, like it works in both directions, and in that case, neither of them are consenting. <laughs> Yeah, that must have been quite scary for both of them. See, you'd never have an excuse to cheat, because Hiramu can like hold himself back and still only want Mazaki. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to be such a mess trying to explain why Mick-chan is not going to be around anymore. I'm scared it's not going to go that well. How is this episode 11? We have one episode left. What the hell is going to happen? This honestly feels like we're halfway through a season. This can't be the end yet. This is so difficult because I felt very emotional watching that initial blowout between Mazaki and Umi-chan's dad. And I even two minutes later now, I just, I feel like I wasn't fair to him, but at the same time, I still feel so viscerally that he handled that completely wrong. And even though I'm like, trying to see it from his perspective and knowing that he's scared and this is a lot of prejudice that's built up over a lifetime that can't just be reversed by one potentially positive encounter with an a mixed gender family it it still feels like he's paying lip service to all the right things to say and yet his actions aren't speaking them at all and I just wonder how one episode is going to be sufficient to have that entire conversation. I just don't know what to expect and it very much does feel like a rehash of Mazaki's situation where his parents thought it best to make him feel sorry for being an Omega, sorry for even really existing and like he has to be scared of everything and anyone who isn't like him. And I just don't want that for Ming Chan, even though it's very clear that his dad is trying to make these decisions out of a good place. Doesn't mean they're good decisions. Anyway, sorry for getting so emotional. I hope you guys still enjoyed it. And otherwise, I'll see you in the final episode. Bye.